All right, this video is about steering columns, tilt versus no tilt. So I'm building a Jeep, and my Jeep came with a steering column that is not tilt. And so I Googled around and I searched around and no one had any good useful info. So, to buy a tilt steering column for a Jeep Wrangler YJ, it's like 300 to $400 anywhere because it's a YJ and people want a lot of money for their stuff. So I went to the local junkyard and I got me a steering column out of a Jeep Cherokee. I think it's the XJ. I don't know what they're called, but it's a regular Cherokee Limited. It's got our steering column on it. This came out of an automatic, so it has this little shifter release when you turn the key on. So they're a little bit different lengths. I'll show you in a second here. So from the mount to the tip of the shaft is about 19 inches on this one and it's about 20 on this one but if you notice in the Jeep the little shaft here can go further up and further down so that shouldn't be a problem um, so the other differences that I've noticed is the little fire mount, wall mount in here is a little bit different than here. Now on the YJ, it's removable. So you can take it off and remount it on this one. So the first change I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shave this off and uh, then try to mount it because this wouldn't fit through the firewall on the Jeep. And uh, we'll go from there. So I'm gonna get cutting on this and shaving it off and then uh, we'll continue in a minute. So here's what it looks like now um, before I clean it up. I just kind of cut the edges around it and then I'll clean all this off so that way it doesn't cut anybody. But that's all I'm doing is basically making it to where it fits through that hole in the firewall here, which it's a pretty big hole anyways. So it should fit with it, no problem. And then we'll take the shroud off of the YJ one. This little shroud being that it's removable. You know, it's got two bolts here. It should come off and then we'll, after we mount it, we'll just put it on and and uh, get it done. Actually, halfway through, I figured that you can just cut around here as long as you don't go too far and you won't damage it and you'll just cut all, all that lip off and that'll be an easy, clean way of doing it. Now let's go to uh, try to fit it in the vehicle. All right, hopefully I'm getting the right angle here. But um, it should just slide right through just like the old one did and uh, fit on the same bolt spot right up here. And so now I see that this little assembly here, which is not needed, is hitting right up here. So we'll get rid of it. I just was thinking uh, I didn't need to get rid of it, but I'll just go ahead and uh, take it off and we'll go from there. I'll be right back. Okay, to remove it, it looks like it's pretty easy. Just a 3 8 nut right here. And that comes off, put the nut back on because it also supports the high and low switch. And there's a little clip here that you could just unclip. And that's your cable, it's out of there. And now we'll give it a try, give me just a second here. All right, so now I just found out that these, this is different than the other one because it's not wide enough. 
So what we'll do is we'll take the other one off, which is four bolts, open it on. Okay, these are all 13 millimeter nuts, bolts, I'm sorry. We're just gonna take them off. They're pretty, pretty easy to take off. And hopefully the other ones are the same. Because again, I don't know, I'm just doing this as I go along. Here's the one off the YJ. And they're also 13 millimeters. And they're pretty easy to take off. Obviously if you have a lot of rust, it won't be, but I live in lovely California where everything is not so rusty. So I'm just gonna keep the same orientation on it. I'm just gonna take it straight across. There's the other one. And we'll see if it bolts up. And sure enough, it does. Well, it does look like it. Let's see if it does. And yes, it does. The bolts line up just fine. So, so far, just very, very minor modifications. Um, cutting the top and replacing the bracket with the original one off the YJ. Make sure you don't pinch any of these wires. This one has cruise control, which I plan to add to my Jeep, so I'm gonna keep that. Um, and of course, if the other stuff is different, I, I you know, the electrical, you could always strip all of that stuff off of there and put it on here, but I'm not worried about wiring because I'm pretty good at wiring things, so I, I'm gonna uh, rewire everything anyways. And uh, nothing on that Jeep is really stock at all, including the engine, it's a diesel, so. Tighten them up, not over tighten. I'm sure there is specs, find them, do them that way, but I'm just trying to see if it'll work here. All right, now we'll take it to the Jeep and see if it lines up. that part so go ahead and, uh, put it into place of course I'm not tightening it all the way just trying to see and the length of it is okay so it's up and down all of the spacing is perfectly fine the brake is okay the clutch is just fine everything fits real nice and it goes right up where the other one was and this thing's right over here. Let's see if we can get it to line up, which I suspect it should, no problem. So we'll just push this out of the way, put it back on, and connect it up. But I have to um, re-steer it. I don't have a key. It's, oh, actually it turns, so that's good. So I could turn it and we'll line it up and put the bolt back on. There it goes, it went on no problem. And I still got plenty of room to slide either way. And there's a safety bolt. So there is a, an XJ steering column or um, a Jeep Cherokee steering column. And this is where we cut, which is outside. You know, I'll just spray paint it black. And then that collar popping the YJ. I'll show you, I'll uh, keep going with the video until I finish it here. And I'll put that collar back on. And there is a, you know, this thing cost me 60 bucks, a pick and pull, because it's not a Jeep Wrangler. 
Um, everybody out there tries to rob us for Jeep parts. And it literally took me maybe 20 minutes. I know, you know, after getting all the parts out, I have my whole dash part and everything, but I don't know if you really have to or not, but you know, that's, it's pretty simple. Like I said, the only modifications I did is replace this bracket and cut off the shroud that was around this, which did no damage at all to it. It's the same thing. It's just on this one, they welded instead of uh, putting a, a bolt on one and the other one they didn't. And uh, that's it. So now you know that a Jeep Cherokee steering column, or I'm thinking now any GM that kind of looks the same, measure from here to the end and make sure that your shaft slides, you know, measure the bolts to the end of it. Make sure they, you know, they're the same so you can switch brackets off and get one off of anything else, a Cherokee or a, an old GM. Um, I know that the S10s and the uh, Sonomas, the early 90s came with that steering column. And that's it. Here's the removal of the bracket that goes against the firewall. It's just two 13 millimeters, and I really didn't even have to pry on it. I thought I'd have to pry on it with a screwdriver or something. The second I loosened the bolts, it just slides right off. But I mean, we're gonna have to take it all the way off anyways to be able to couple it to the other one now that, that it's in. But we can do that easily. Um, I'll take it off, and uh, I'll just put it on the, the other steering column. Two bolts, comes right off. It's dirty. Um, I'm sure you probably want to get a new insulator piece, but it's a fucking Jeep. Um, so it's not going to have uh, much of insulation anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one back on the way it is. There it is. So here's the part inside the Jeep. I'll align these with the bolts that they were already on. This one and the bottom one. The bolts stick out the firewall anyways. See these right here? So these will kind of go on at first, so that way we make sure the steering wheel is, is aligned, the steering column is aligned where it needs to go. And then we'll just push it all the way against the firewall, put the bolts back on, and then we'll mount the steering wheel, uh, steering column to it. That way we know it's, it's in place. Now mine has all the rubber undercoating in, so these will be a little bit of a pain to put on. So I had to use an impact to take them off, but uh, I think I'll have to do that again, putting them on. So um, it's gonna be a little noisy. And as they go on, you can see it's making a nice little tight seal there because it's the same steering column, you know. And I'll go ahead and put the other two up. But I won't tighten them all the way until I put the two other ones in. So give me a second here. All four. So that way it's flush against the firewall. Tighten these all the way. And then I'll tighten the top back up. And I'll get back to you when it's all done. Don't forget to tighten your steering keeper bolt. And you don't want that flying on you on the road. There you go. And if you um, want to rekey it, I'm sure there's plenty of videos on it. But here's my new sturdy, fully functional tilt steering column on my Jeep Wrangler out of a Jeep Cherokee. The wiring harness, again, should be the same. But if not, it's just a few bolts and these rods are the same, I believe. So even if this is different, you could completely um, take the two or three bolts out, put the other one off the Jeep on there. Same thing with the uh, key, you know, um, ignition cylinder. But like I said, 
I'm wiring everything from scratch. My Jeep is uh, empty. Um, so it doesn't really matter to me, but I'm certain they should be the same. If not, like I said, they should be really simple, simple to uh, replace. Um, it's a really, really, really easy project. Um, honestly, all I used was my cutting wheel to cut the shroud off and regular um, bolts and stuff. I mean, I have power tools, but you don't need them. Um, it was it was cake. It was really, really easy. Uh, it took me about a half an hour to do total. There's the old steering column, which is still fully functional. I could probably list it on eBay and get a couple of bucks off of it. Probably get the same amount of money that I spent on the other one because this is a Jeep Wrangler part. And uh, that's that. All done. Thank you.